Hello, my name is Dr. Lisa Noland. I'm a sex historian and a CEO of the Marriage, Sex and Culture Group London. I'm going to be talking about how to sex proof your children in the next few minutes and I hope that you can benefit, uh, that you can gain huge insight that perhaps you haven't seen before. Please uh, email me if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint. So that's drlisa1957 at gmail.com. There it is. Um, either for this PowerPoint or the supplement, which gives um, a quite a bit more detail in terms of the damage of RSE, uh, examples, and how best to respond. Whoever captures the kids owns the future. And Ms. Warren is dead right. And at this point, the opposition, as it were, is doing a very good job. So in my view, we must up our game. It's not about us. It's about them. It's about them. It's a huge topic, and uh, I can only start you off. Uh, and I'm sorry, some of this content is horrific, but this is about our kids' welfare. As activists are targeting them, we must up our game. Relationship and sex education, I'm going to call it RSE, plays a huge role. And see Christian Concern for great advice. I love Christian Concern to bits. They do a wonderful job and they can help on some of the specifics. I see part of my task today is to show you how bad it is in places so that you will be motivated and do something about it. And please note, there are a few commendable RSE programs and good RSE is vital, but many are mixed and some appall. Uh, an example here, the worst case I've ever come across uh, involved a 13-year-old uh, girl coming home, telling her mother that a classmate had been masturbating in class that day. Uh, the teacher was discussing the clitoris, and show and tell moved to go and do. Uh, the mother phoned the school the next day, and uh, instead of the school looking into this situation, and by the way, the teacher did nothing, uh, the mother was called into the school to discuss her own um, difficult and regressive sexual attitudes. After a huge uh, ordeal, one of the few Christians who was willing to stand with her simply told her, you're lucky you still have your daughter. So, in terms of this RSE, uh, in my view, bad RSE tutors and grooms children to, quote, explore sex a la Alfred Kinsey. He's the father of the sexual revolution. His research has never been replicated as it is based from data from pedophiles abusing children from infancy, complete with stopwatch. Uh, this bad RSE also minimizes or ignores politically incorrect, medically accurate facts about bodies, sex, mental health, and physical health and disease, and gives a false reassurance of safe sex. We are targeting bad RSE. This wonderful woman, um, very brave Jewish psychiatrist, sums it all up. Uh, Miriam Grossman has said, our kids are being taught they can safely play with fire, while the offices of doctors and therapists are filled with those who've been burnt inside and out. So my goal today is to enable you to sex-proof your children, to help them understand sex and make wise decisions with a focus on the psychology. The method is through building strong, salient relationships which enable them to hear positive, life-affirming counter-narratives. You both want their best, which is why sex for them now is such a bad idea. We are the good sex people. But in terms of this whole issue, uh, another aspect must be brought in here. Um, we are in this crisis now partly because our leaders have been oddly, silently passive and mute in the face of this crisis. Thankfully, groups like Christian Concern exist, 
But what about the rest? Well, in my view, that about sums up uh, the state of things. So, well done, you're here, let's proceed. Children are like wet cement. Whatever falls on them leaves an impression, child psychologist uh, Dr. Gano. And in fact, my Muslim colleagues ask me why the Christian parents are so passive. Don't they care about what's happening to their children? So one bit of action here, and I'm really hoping this will land positively, and that you'll feel empowered to go out and on the front foot and do something positive about this, is to hold your leaders to account, fuss, and vote if necessary with your money and with your feet. This is happening on their watch to their own. Forget anyone else's. And this is unacceptable. So, toxic RSE. Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. No. Uh, I would like to show you a brief clip from a wonderful scenario between um, that shows how propaganda works. So we have a clueless, capitulating father and a liberated son. Remember, whoever captures the kids owns the future. You know, son, you, you're not a kid anymore. Oh, no. I go to health class, Dad. I already know all this stuff. Well, they don't teach you about everything in health class. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants? So just listen. When boys and girls get a little older, they start getting interested in one another, right? You know, and non-binary people, agendered, intergendered, FTX, gender fluid people. What? There's more than just boys and girls now, Dad. And they're not girls, they're women. Y yeah, okay, okay, sure. <clears throat> well, my point is that sex is a, it's a very important decision. How are you defining sex? Sex is different things to different people. I guess when, when a penis goes into a vagina? What if there's two men or two women or more? More? How would you define sex with multiple simultaneous partners? Or what if somebody's undergone genital reconstruction or, or is intersex? Uh, no, but I'm just talking about normal, straight... Normal? Come on, Dad. Okay, here we go. Let me ask you this. Son, are you attracted to women? Yes, but I'm, I'm young. Is Emily a woman? Biologically. Okay, you're attracted to women. Emily's a woman. So if you were to have sex with Emily... I wouldn't just have sex with Emily. We'd have to make that decision together. Homecoming's not an excuse to ignore consent. I'm not saying to ignore consent. I never said ignore consent. You and Emily, right, consensually decide to have sex. Vaginal? Yes, vaginal. Just two of us. How many people do you want? Yes, just the two of you, Colin. And I'm playing the traditional male role? Go to homecoming. You seem like you really wanted to talk about this. No, no, I don't want to talk about anything. Ever again. So I can go. Please do. Out. Thank you. Don't forget your corsage. Hey, Dad. Yeah. How do I look? You look very handsome, son. That's gender coding, but... Get out of my house! Next, I would like to show you a, a clip from a drag queen story time indicating how RSC, again, this is toxic RSC, starts young. This is Mama G on twerking. Uh, this was uh, filmed in the Devon Libraries, August 2019. Progressive nurseries and schools regularly invite drag queens in to perform. Who would like to do some of those funny little dances from Fortnite? Does anybody know any of the dances from Fortnite? Oh, then you are a credit to your community. <laughs> but most of all, Michael likes to twerk. Now, does anybody in this room know how to twerk? Okay, well, it's quite important to the story, so I will just give you a very quick demonstration. <laughs> all you need to do is you just stand with your feet sort of shoulder width apart, like so. Okay, and I'll, sh I'll show you at the side, so you can get a better view there. And you, you crouch down into this sort of position here, so your bum sticking out. Don't be taking this all in. <laughs> and then you just move your bum up and down like that, and that's twerking. <laughs> More story time. This is from the Rainbow Dildo Butt Monkey uh, in a library in East London just this past July. This was pulled after much protest at the plastic genitalia and buttocks. 
even more story time. Now this um, shows you an element that is very much starting to come to the fore, and that is overt Satanism. So here we have Zochi Mochi, a, a satanic goddess, reading to children at the Michelle Obama Neighborhood Library in Southern California in October 2017. And according to reviews, it was a huge success. Okay, so we've, we've talked about that facet. Now we're going to move into some school curriculum. This woman here, Dr. Barnes, very powerful, very persuasive, a founder of a charity, Educate and Celebrate, which is transforming schools through smashing heteronormativity. And she's being successful here. So I'd like to show you a clip on how that is happening now. Hello, Ellie Barnes here from Educate and Celebrate, how to make your schools LGBT friendly. I am really proud to be a lesbian. Yeah, sometimes maybe a little overexcited about that. We are a charity that transforms schools and organisations into LGBT friendly places. So predominantly we are training teachers because we want our teachers to be really, really confident in the language of gender identity and sexual orientation. And really the bottom line is to completely smash heteronormativity. That's what we want to do. So our kids can grow up and be who they are. We totally encourage intersectional ways of teaching, lots of pedagogies around usualising. So making LGBT plus an everyday occurrence within the school. In our school, every lesson is somehow linked to diversity. It used to be the odd lesson when we talked about diversity, but now it never stops. Hi everyone, my name is Steph. I'm here for Educate and Celebrate and Queer My Library. We ask our students and our teachers to mark key LGBT dates on the calendar. One of our busiest times is February, LGBT History Month, where we engage our students, our teachers, parents, governors, and the local authorities in whole school change. We've been looking at LGBT all week. We've had singers, we've had dancers, we've had drama, we've had teachers that have come out to standing ovations, we've had kids that have come out. It's just been incredible, the, mo the best week ever. We've got a rainbow week, we've got guest speakers, we've got a mini pride march happening in the school. And really the bottom line is to completely smash heteronormativity. That's what we want to do. And this is what smashing heteronormativity lands as. I mean, there are many ways, many facets, but these are two. So we have um, a drag festival in Austin. This is from 2017, two males here, a little boy and a um, unicorn and uh, a breast or chest feeding dad on the cover of Time in 2016. So more uh, examples. I'm not going to show you this. It is graphic in the extreme, but if you want to watch it for yourself, it's a blow by blow. Again, show and tell, go and do. So uh, in terms of older children, um, a lesson for um, ages 11 to 12, from a horrified teacher, thank God for these whistleblowers. The kids were to also told briefly about bestiality, sex toys, and masturbation. One of the teachers said bestiality was a sexuality, whereby some people are attracted to and have sex with animals. It was talked about like it is completely normal, and that's a great website, by the way, Safe Schools Alliance UK. God bless them. School curriculum, uh, now, this is from SexWise for post-pubertal 13s. Theresa May's conservative government recommended in 2018 this sexual health, quote-unquote, resource for schools. Bizarre, high-risk, taboo-breaking sex acts are sanitized, minimized, infantilized, 
t uh, sex toys, sex play. There's a great deal of that kind of terminology used. And promoted, quote, safely, often involving pain as kink. Now, kink is sex and pain together, okay? Simultaneous plural partners, extreme kinds of anal sex, and anal sex is huge for girls, boys, neither, both, whatever. Sadly, and it's incredibly high risk, but I'll come to that in a bit. But here we go. This is what children were encouraged to look at in terms of, of getting a high quality sex education. So we have um, plural partners, fisting, that's the inserting of a fist up the vagina or the anus. Um, um, prostate massage, that's when you, the, you massage your partner's prostate. Again, we won't go into the health implications. Plural partners, oh, um, urine, um, feces play, notice the play, notice all these play terms. Very discouraging. So now what I want to do is, again, I could have gone on and on. You get the point. Things are in places very grim. So what do kids need to know from us? Here we go. So good sex messages that youngsters need to know depending on their age and stage. Number one, sex is fab. Christians believe God thought it up. Two, sex is fire and can permanently damage your life. Three, sex is for later. Marriage can give best sex. And then sex is big, powerful. Sex is glue, whether you know it or not, whether you want it to be so or not. Sex is often addictive. More good sex messages. Your brain stores memories of every sex act. Sex is safer for adults than for you. Why? The vulnerable teen cervix, brain immaturity, and high hormone levels, factors which help explain the higher teen STI, STD rates, and see my supplementary PowerPoint for more in terms of the evidence there. And not all sex acts carry the same risk. Some are far more hazardous than others. Condoms can give you only limited protection. Some STIs are spread even with proper condom use. There's always forgiveness and a fresh start. Secondary virginity. Learn from your mistakes to become a better, stronger person, more equipped to help others. Give it to God and let him redeem it. He never wastes anything and can use anything if we let him. And finally, the best sex message of all. Youngsters are not hearing that great disease and regret-free sex is yours for life if you A, delay sexual debut until adulthood, B, marry someone who has waited to, and then C, remain faithful or, quote, closed. So vital advice youngsters need to hear. Press pause and grow up first. You are vulnerable in ways your adult self will not be. Look after yourself now. Be smart. So regardless of pregnancy or an STI, STD diagnosis, negative outcomes for sexually active youngsters include association with increased risk-taking, drugs, alcohol, crime, poor emotional health, including depression, regret of sexual activity, lower self-esteem, suicide, also increased likelihood of experiencing sexual exploitation, dating violence, uh, unwanted or forced intercourse or rape. So uh, again, do email me for that other PowerPoint that has the documentary evidence for that. Now I'd like to finish with, with looking at issues in terms of psychology and sex. We talked about why and how so many leaders are missing in action and asleep at the wheel in relation to this. Well, let's look at some of the reasons why. Okay. The psychological aspects which permeate culture and inhibit us include, in my view, the fear of being seen as anti-sex losers. We're sad, sour, boring, prudish, repressed, killjoys. We don't or can't have it, so no one else should either. Uh, this is a classic quote that sums up so much. Puritanism, the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy. Now that is 
H.L. Mencken's caricature of conservative Christians. It's dead wrong, but sadly, it has stuck. So, who wants the reputation of a killjoy? Most of us don't. Other myths. Everything interesting in life is illegal, immoral, or fattening. If you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. Well, who wants to miss all the fun? How can we be a naughty today? And notice again how it's infantilized, how it's shrunk, it's, it's minimized, it's harmless. No, no, but that's how, and that is what is being sold to our children. A little naughty never killed anyone. Psychological aspects also include despairing capitulation. It's too late. Unresolved trauma and moral failure. Given my past, who am I to speak? Fear of aggravating the situation, embarrassment, fear of being thought salacious because, quote, good Christians don't speak about such things. I was addressing a Christian event, wanted to show them some of this material, and the tech people refused. They said, no, this is, these are dirty pictures, as it were. No, this is unholy, ungodly, and we will not show them. My response was, okay, but our kids are being taught this stuff, so don't you at least need to know what is involved? So doing the psychology with our young, here are a few ideas here. In general, helping them, helping your children to recognize love and identify with the true, the real, and the good, over the counterfeits and evil. See, here, Dorothy knew, she knew who her friends were. <laughs> she knew who her enemies were. So often, so many of our youngsters are attracted to the dark side. So, I think, and perhaps there are various reasons for that, but one of them is, uh, so this is a quote from Simone Veil on evil. Imaginary evil is romantic and varied. Real evil is gloomy, monotonous, barren, boring. Imaginary good is boring. Real good is always new, marvelous, intoxicating. Doing the psychology number two, filling holes. All sins are attempts to fill voids, again from Simone Veil. How can we help our kids avoid their pitfalls? How can we help them identify the triggers to their temptation cycles? And how to break them? How can we help them fill their holes in healthy ways? So in short, how can we help them stop self-sabotaging? Number three, consequences. We don't break the commandments. We break ourselves on them. Take what you want, God says, and pay for it. We can ignore reality, but we cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. So how can we help our youngsters keep the consequences of unhealthy behavior in focus? Uh, general tips to up our game with our youngsters. One, do all you can to keep your youngsters on side, majoring on first order issues, minimizing second order ones. It's just not worth it. Sometimes some of this is a phase. First order issues are vital, but the others, well, just ignore them. Number two, fill your lo child's love cup each day through the three A's by giving them affirmation, attention, affection, psychological and physical. Do you know their love language? Learn to get inside their heads and see life through their eyes. They will love it that you get them and you will handle messy situations far more effectively, far more wisely. Encourage wider life goals, projects and investment in others. What are their aspirations and how are they going about fulfilling them? See, in a sense, you're their coach. They're out there on the, playing on the field. You don't live their life for them, you can't. But you can help them do the best they possibly can. You can be their coach. You can help them up their game. It's never too late. You will always be their mother or father. Your relationship is more important than either of you will likely realize. So invest 
and do you pray for your children? Final thoughts. Please email for a copy of this PowerPoint and its supplement if you are interested in a full sex proofing seminar. Uh, the supplement goes into areas I've not been able to cover, including excellent materials on the downsides of RSC, how graphic sex content eroticizes child development via mirroring, uh, and to note, approximately a third of all child sex abuse is by other children. So this show and tell, go and do is very worrying, very alarming. Uh, and if you cannot discuss such matters with your kids, consider passing this PowerPoint on to a trusted, perhaps younger mentor to your children. Some of you won't be able to do this, but please can you give it to someone who can at least start unpacking some of this with your children and then become the best mother, the best father you can be. Thank you so much. Do be in touch. God bless. Um, thank you, Lisa. Um, really good points, I think, in that presentation um, points as well. And it's it's kind of shocking to be reminded um, just how just how much some of this stuff is being promoted in schools. Um, um, uh, the curriculum is so sexualized. We've even had cases of like maths lessons and science lessons being sexualized um, in some of our cases here. Um, and um, I suppose a, a question for me to start with is, is how do parents go about objecting to things that the school is teaching that they don't agree? Uh, well, I think, uh, first of all, they, I think it's very helpful for them to understand a little bit of about child psychology, like how this is in fact eroticizing child development. That's kind of my some of the, the, in terms of the key messages I put out, this is damaging our kids. This isn't good sex ed. We're all for good sex ed. That's great. We all need, these kids need the very best, highest quality, honest, accurate, and developmentally appropriate sex ed. This isn't that. <laughs> this is pure Alfred Kinsey, who was as uh, kinky, as ill, as um, truly perverse an individual as they come and it's from his research which has never been replicated his research has never been replicated because it was done on the bodies of little boys and girls from about 12 months up by pedophiles who would masturbate them with a stopwatch see the research the basis for this crazy bad rsc is kinsey's quote research and it's never been replicated. So you can start there saying, show me the research. But number two, we now have, for instance, I, I discussed how a third of all child sex, um, it, uh, um, sex assaults are coming from other children. See, children cannot handle this sexualized content. Uh, uh, go and, sorry, show and tell, go and do. That sort of thing is happening. Now, there are many factors coming into that. I'm not saying RSE is the only, bad RSE is the only one, but it certainly is one of them. Uh, but then the other thing is, it, I think it's really important for parents to start talking to other parents to go, do you know what is being taught to our kids? And somehow this reserve that English parents or whatever have like, oh, well, we better not talk about it. Who are we to know? We're just the parent. It's like, no, no, no. So I guess I would encourage parents to try to find someone else or get their church to start talking about this stuff. In many ways, that's one of the main points for this PowerPoint. Where has the church been? It's like, this is happening to their very yeah. own. This isn't, forget the, all the other kids out there who are from other faiths or no faith. This is to their own and Christian teachers having to teach this. So they're not simply talking about this stuff. They are embedding it in little ones. This is not yeah. okay, in my view. Yeah. So, and I'm uh, we have Izzy Montague and now, um, more recently, Najan Sarai Do you want to talk about those? You're cutting out for me a bit, um, Tim. I think we're having quite a lot of technical oh. difficulties. I don't know if it's my end or if it's, um, if it's actually what's coming at me. Um, just to follow on from what Lisa has said just there, um, 
what's really important is that if possible is that we see groups of parents um, begin to um, come together if possible to begin to get educated what happened in the case of Izzy uh, Montague a mum who was concerned about what her five-year-old son was being taught in the school and also the case uh, of Nigel and Sally Rowe they were concerned their primary uh, age school children were being faced with the issue of transgenderism when uh, two children in the school, in fact three in the end, were identifying in the opposite sex, uh, coming into school dressed in the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Simply for raising those issues, these particular parents were isolated from by the staff, were called homophobic, transphobic, mm -hmm. And so what we actually need to see is more parents like them. So the normalising of parents asking questions that Izzy Montague and Nigel and Sally Rowe asked. I think one of the very concerning things is the silence that we have overall around these issues mm -hmm. from parents. It's mm -hmm. as if parents have abdicated the responsibility in terms of the mm -hmm. training and educating of their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. And um, we had a we had a we had a question here from Heather Scammell, um, or Heather Scammell is saying I'm in Wales, and legislation was passed just recently, wasn't it, to uh, mm -hmm. remove the parental right to withdraw mm -hmm. children from lessons mm -hmm. um, before the curriculum has been written. Um, Lisa, do you want to comment on that? Yeah. No. Th thank God. <clears throat> I okay. I run a group of very, it's like a, a pearls on a necklace, <clears throat> um, beads on a necklace, just very, very disparate, but everyone is focusing in their own way on this. We have wonderful, our, we call, I call them the bra brave Welsh mums who are fighting back PCP, if someone could perhaps look that up. So it's, um, it's in Wales and uh, it, they're doing an amazing job or email me and I'll send you the, the leaders who are appalled. And also the truth is they have not gotten a huge amount of support from the church. So there are, and there are many Christians who are worried, but this is a group that's pushing back PCP. Um, and I'm so sorry, I should have had it, but email me. So Dr. Lisa 1957 at gmail.com. And so this group in Wales is very much, they're going out there and they're protesting in public. Really important to get our concerns outside so that the powers that be and the public space realize, hold on, not everyone is bu buying this. And in fact, very different kinds of groups. So we have our brave, brave Muslim moms and dads that are also protesting. So I think it's really time to come together to say, no, this is bad for our children for all sorts of reasons. And we're not taking it. We're not standing for it. But Wales, yes, is very, very worrying what's going on there now. Yes. Um, and we had another question from Robert Wright on uh, on YouTube, who says, what advice can you give when a board of governors of school has had no um, input on the school's decision to join Stonewall and where the group think prevents board members from speaking up? And uh, do you want to comment on that? I mean, I think we did put an article out about that earlier this year about how to write to your school about Stonewall. Yes, we do. And I think that could be posted up by the um, by. Uh, the Christian Concern support staff here, if we could just post that up, and it's on, it's certainly on our website, mm -hmm. in terms of content there, and how to raise this with the, with the school, and also, um, people should be very free to contact in terms of us, in terms of every day we're here, helping parents, helping school governors to actually navigate this stuff, we're here to help you to write letters, to formulate the position, to, to set out what the law is, so we hear, we're here and we act as a service in order to actually do that. Um, but if this kind of thing is implemented without the governing body knowing, then that ought to be challengeable. It's going to be challengeable within the internal school, school mechanisms, within the, in, the internal school governance, but then it can be raised elsewhere uh, because the governors are there to govern at the school. And this is one of the critical issues. So it should be challenged. Again, it's whether or not people have the courage to do it. Once people begin to have the courage, once there are examples of people taking this on and schools beginning to back mm -hmm. down or beginning to change, then we will see a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing is the recent fall from grace of Stonewall, which is quite encouraging. Lisa, do you want to yes. talk about that? 
Oh, this is just wonderful news because Stonewall has, um, uh, um, it has half truth, half uh, falsehood, and all the claims, the whatever, has just taken the public realm, uh, taken over. And if you're anti-Stonewall, you're therefore homophobic, transphobic, blah, 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 blah. And uh, the real problem, again, is our leaders, and I do hold them responsible, where have they been? See, they've been too um, busy doing politically correct, good, political but politically correct um, uh, events, uh, engagements, to actually say, stop, we need to look at exactly what's being claimed by groups like Stonewall. And then is, is it true? Is it false? How does it fall within the law? And again, Christian Concern has wonderful stuff on this. But that Stonewall is falling, I think is indicative. Also in the States, there's a lot of stuff happening as well. Parents pushing back. And in many ways, um, it's gotten so bad, but maybe that's a blessing in disguise because the parents who have thought, oh, my betters will take care of things. They know more than I do. I'm constantly saying, no, no, you're, you are your child's, you know your child far better than any school, than any teacher. Like, take responsibility. This is your job. And it's not that scary, particularly when you can hold hands with other parents. But no, I think for Stonewall to be um, to be targeted is very indicative of a sea change. And we've had government agencies drop out of Stonewall and yeah. Channel 4 drop out of Stonewall, various big corporations drop out of Stonewall, BBC under pressure for using Stonewall. Mm -hmm. So your school should be under pressure if they're using Stonewall. They should be fierce. It's all about reputation. They want to use Stonewall because of reputation. And if the reputation of Stonewall, they want to get out of it. An interesting comment here from, I uh, hope I pronounce your name, um, on Facebook. I'm a Muslim parent of a teenager. And for the past year, I've been fighting with the school against the RSE mm -hmm. teaching they're using. Radical organizations for their resources. But if we speak up and are labeled, we're labeled as extreme, I believe Christians mm -hmm. and the Muslim community should work mm -hmm. together on this. Lisa, do you want to mm -hmm. talk about that? Oh, yes, yes. It's very interesting, uh, sorry, because my group constantly does the psychology. What is going on at a psychological level? And um, so one of the things that I note working with my Muslim mates, and God bless them, folks, God bless them. See, they have never identified, many of them, with some of the core core stuff of, of, of British society. So therefore, they are able to step back and look at what's going on. And they keep saying to me, well, don't Christian parents care? Don't they know? Don't they see? How, how can this possibly be okay? And what it comes to me as, certainly there are many things going on, but one of them is, in the main, many Christian parents identify with the system. And if you identify with the system, you will overlook some of the things you don't like. Or your daughter-in-law teaches, you know, uh, year twos in this great C of E school. Yes, they have Stonewall, but see, it's, it's what you choose not to see because of where you are psychologically positioned. Whereas our Muslim parents are not, they are not, and I'm not talking about Sharia, Muslim, that's kind of another issue. But I'm talking about ones who are just social conservatives, who want who have family values, they're pro-life, they hate LGBT, they want their children to grow up healthy, uh, happy, and being able to be married to someone of the opposite sex and not be thinking I'm trapped in the wrong body and, and all that. So I think in many ways, they've been, um, they've been, uh, uh, they've wondered what is going on with our Christian parents who are so blasé, complacent, um, naive, uh, and just missing in action. And certainly with leaders, with our good Christian organizations, where are they? Like, what's happened? I mean, Christian concern. Well, I, do think there are, I, mean, I think there are some materials out there which uh, groups have produced that are good. And we need to, yeah. we need to, uh, again, what, we need to be is more active in promoting some of the materials that are good into yeah. our schools. Christian parents need to be more, more at the gates and pushing back. You, and you're right, Lisa, where, where has the voice been? We have been subdued as if it's, uh, we've trusted the system to do the yes. right thing mm -hmm. in the end. Um, mm -hmm. When 
as parents, we've lost the notion that we are the primary educators of our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. it's to have we've and we've become and generally what's happened is that people have become so used to the state mm -hmm. educate uh, the, the idea that the state educates the the state mm -hmm. is responsible health the state is responsible for education it's mm -hmm. become so big that we don't even we don't have mm -hmm. the the tools mm -hmm. as a, as a mm -hmm. nation as a people we just don't have the tools to push back when we think something's not quite right mm -hmm. here we no longer have the tools to push back mm -hmm. and it's also sort of mm -hmm. creeps up incrementally mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i mean it feels like a tsunami now but it's crept up over many years um mm -hmm. there's been a shift um, and now mm. we've sort of demoralized mm. people, a people that can't, doesn't know how to push back. Mm -hmm. So, but, but it's not to say that mm -hmm. there are, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to at least to give us alternatives to schools. For instance, Lovewise has some amazing stuff. We ought to be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there, there, is, there, is pro, there are products that we should be push, pushing out there. Mm -hmm. well, well, what, one of the things, sorry. Oh, sorry. One of the things, uh, yeah, I very much encourage every parent to do is to um, get some of the RSE or whatever and actually show it to their pastor, their priest, their um, uh, house group leader, whatever, and say, what are you doing about this? Actually I mean, I still, it's say, still you have a responsibility. I know. I think it was quite interesting um, today is that Steve Nolan with, has been looking at Stonewall for the BBC. What actually surprises me is that the stuff that he's produced saying, this is an expose. This is what Stonewall has been putting in the schools. This is how Stonewall trains. Well, Lisa, you've been talking to us about this for decades. And the idea that somehow this gender <laughs> unicorn is shocking, I mean, they ha he hasn't begun to see the half of it. I mean, this is. I know. No. And there's a sense in which I'm thinking, are you really saying this is an expose? And where has <laughs> everyone been? And Lisa, have we just been talking to one another for the past two decades? Yes. How, yes. I mean, how how is it that the reach is, is so small? <laughs> Can't see the reach in terms of the numbers that are on this, you know, on 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 this yeah. live stream right now. But there yeah. is there's a real issue there in terms of what people seem to think is actually going on. And I have a not obviously I have a much more general presentation, but even to show the books that are pretty mild com in comparison to the material that you had in your presentation today, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of the Antango Makes Three and My Princess oh, Boy yeah. and Mar and Me, those sorts of books, when I show the content of them. To folk when I'm out and about, they're shocked. I know, I know. But that's not even the beginning, is it, Lisa? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, that's that's kindergarten. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know, so you're right, yeah. So there's a lack of you know, you know, if you don't have knowledge, then your children perish here. Yes. If the parent isn't engaged. Mm -hmm. um, is this just, I think we've just always thought, oh, schools are a safe place. Everyone assumes mm -hmm. schools are a safe place. Mm -hmm. But we've got to a place now whereby the state says, age four, you can't choose, it's transphobic to say a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. Mm -hmm. Joshua Sutcliffe, he gets removed as a teacher for saying, well done girls to a group of girls. Mm -hmm. By a doctor, to, you know, you, you get into that kind of point. Uh, where you're being taught that you can love anyone you want to love, mm -hmm. have sex when it, it feels right. All mm -hmm. of these things become so normalized that mm -hmm. our children, it's, there's no wonder that our children now in this nation are amongst the most unhappy in the world. Mm -hmm. Suicidality mm -hmm. rates are incredibly high. The We've got children identifying as pansexual, bisexual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at extraordinarily high rates why because we have taught them from age four mm -hmm. that they are we've just taught them that they can be anything they want to be we've given them mm -hmm. no truths mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's um, but that's the kind of stuff i've just outlined there it's just the beginning of it mm -hmm. because 
the material i know lisa people don't want to look at your material I, <laughs> let, let me say everyone i flinch i flinch at lisa's material i put my head like that's i do that every single time and when she speaks stuff i go my body tightens up it's just the truth <laughs> you see yes. mm-hmm. i have to face it because mm-hmm. the truth is these are the people that are training the teachers mm-hmm. that are teaching our children mm-hmm. and you're an adult mm-hmm. Sandra. yes you're cutting out again for me tim i'm sorry about that do you want to talk about pornography just the last few minutes, Lisa, um, as another thing that we need to try and protect children from and that is so prevalent in society? What can we do about protecting our children from pornography? Okay, well, uh, one good thing about porn is at least <clears throat> it is it is politically correct to speak against pornography to a greater or lesser degree. So you're not going against the stream. You're not going against society as much in being anti-porn as it were. Um, uh, For me, what is just so odd is so much of this RSE, the toxic RSE, is pornography in another form, uh, which uh, and that actually, to me, is the most worrying because it's basically been stamped as this is uh, safe, this is relevant, this is helpful to children. And I'm going, no, no, actually, this isn't. But for the hardcore or even softcore porn stuff, um, many churches who won't engage in other things at least are starting to be willing to talk about porn, which to me, that's a very positive thing, at least start the journey, maybe you don't get very far, but at least you're starting to talk about um, uh, uh, all the issues raised, the huge damage to girls, the, uh, I mean, really what we're needing is some good feminists saying, no, no, this is absolutely appalling in terms of these young girls' self-esteem, their their understandings of their bodies, etc., being pornified as it were. But there are many groups who are who would not be with us on other things, who are blowing the whistle on porn. And that is, I think that's somewhat encouraging. Although some really trendy RSE is talking about good uses of porn, bad uses of porn, et cetera. So it's not just a one, it's mixed. But what you can do is you simply start talking about how and why this is so damaging. And I think living um, uh, um, love wise has a superb, Um, package on pornography and how it damages, how it changes people's understandings of sex, of relationships, of whatever, and um, how it can become so addictive. I mean, that's the other, I mean, there are many problems to it, but um, at least I think we are further Mm -hmm. ahead in terms of the porn front than the RSC front. Yeah. And do you want to talk about pornography at all? The issue around pornography is the the utter availability and damage that it's that it's doing to our and it's and it's and it's it's it's, it's catastrophic for our mm-hmm. young young boys, our young girls, and mm-hmm. it's it's wholly available. It's pri- it, it, it's private. It's behind closed doors. It's shaming mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. They live with this and it creates a situation uh, whereby they 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 end up being so bru- internally shamed mm-hmm. by it that mm-hmm. they're unable to um, to handle it. They they themselves become damaged, they become more open to being abused mm-hmm. themselves, mm-hmm. they become highly sexualized. So there is a sort of there is a porn pandemic when we think that the age, mm-hmm. the, the age the average age of access to porn is around nine years nine years of age at this time mm-hmm. um, for our boys an increasing use amongst our girls then this is a serious sickness which mm-hmm. is within our children because we're li- we're not we're failing to protect them so I'm saying especially within the churches there needs to be the most massive push to protect our children but also we need to be in a situation where we're calling out the porn use within mm-hmm. our congregations generally. The 
one of the keys is to is within the church certainly um is to seek to seek purity to confess that we've absolutely failed in this area and i and i talk about there needing to be a moral revolution there needs to be a, a purity revolution in our churches because if we're a, if we're going to push back on the lgbtqi agenda mm -hmm. in our schools then we're going to need to push back from a position mm -hmm. uh whereby the, the 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 secret shame of pornography isn't isn't silencing mm -hmm. us and i think that's part of it all i think there's such a lot of secret shame um mm -hmm. porn use um that we're that we're really struggling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now um someone called star on youtube can we as parents ask our school secondary level for the literature and other documents that very worried parent. Lisa, do you want to talk about that? Can we as parents ask our schools? Using GTS. Okay. <clears throat> From what I understand, and it would be good to have Steve uh, here, who is uh, the head of In Terms of Education, and he's going to be running a conference, I think, in a couple of weeks here with Christian Concern. But from what I understand, yes, you can. Now, age of consent, 15, 16, kids can, quote unquote, decide on their own. Uh, that's actually a very good question. And I'm not totally solid on the answer, but I would think so. Maybe we could ask, um, if whoever is asking the question emails me, I will find out the answer and get back to them. But certainly what you can do is you, you show up at the school and you start putting pressure on the school saying, look, I don't want my child sexualized. And um, uh, uh, so teenagers are particularly vulnerable uh, and this is damaging. And I think for me, the biggest thing is this will stay with them throughout their whole lives. This is not, this is so much worse than one fake. You know, right now, smart kids know smoking is stupid. Smart kids know smoking really mucks up their lungs, et cetera. It's really damaging to them. Uh, one sex act gone wrong can be with them until they're dead. It, it'll stay with them their whole life. It can be a life changer. And it's a big deal. It's not a little deal. So certainly parents can start putting pressure and ought to feel like, yes, these are my children. They do not belong to the school or to the state. They're given to me. I have a responsibility. But if that person would like to email me, I will get the answer. And thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think you can request to see the information. Absolutely, yeah. Um, on yeah. that. And they, they have a duty to tell it to show you as well. And um, and it's good to do so because it puts pressure on them. Yes. Um, so, you know, just the fact that a parent's interested to see it puts pressure on them. Um, about this so do ask your schools what you're teaching on this and and or and for more information about the if they're getting external uh, groups in ask them mm -hmm. about the external group who are they what's their background and what are the slides they're going to use all this stuff is what you should be asking your schools um, about that's what I do with my my kids schools um, anyway listen I think we're out of time it's been helpful I'm really sorry about the tech issues there we'll work hard to make sure they don't happen again but Lisa thank you very much for joining us and taking the time we will post that video up in high quality without any problems on YouTube uh, before very long. And uh, Andrea, I'd love to see you as well. And thank you everyone for watching. Um, and we we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Next time is live stream on Friday lunchtime at, at 1 p.m. And we we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much. Yeah.